Hey guys, it's me, the Merrigan, and today we have the Star Model B. Get a good look at this one. Shoots 9x19 in a 45 frame. It shares a lot of similarities with the 45. You know, pretty hefty. You can definitely use it as a paperweight, that's for sure. And with that little tiny barrel at the end, you know for sure it's a 9mm. As you can tell, the 9mm definitely dwarfs the big hunking lead of 45. Now remember, 45 is a pretty good round, guys, and the 1911 definitely had, it, had its favors and, you know, bullet weight, but projectile velocity was actually pretty slow compared to the 9mm back there. Let's see if I can focus on that little thing. It's real hard to focus on little tiny bullets. You know, you have your typical uh, 45 controls. You got your magazine release right there. Comes out with ease. You got your standard uh, hand grips, and I think these can actually change out with the 45 hand grips. You know, any type of 1911, 1911A1 hand grips. Probably the A1 hand grips. Back here we have a safety. You know, that's on fire, and that's safe mode. Okay, trigger. Now, this trigger is actually kind of strange because when you pull back on it, it actually edges down. And I believe that a standard 45 actually pushes straight back. So this has some type of you know, like a like a European style trigger. You know, it's not it's not a true 45 trigger mechanism. And the slide says Star S A. All sorts of Spanish stuff on it. it. Has a little sun, trademarked of Star, caliber 9 by 19. The B on the heel of the pistol indicates that it is a 9 by 19 caliber firearm and that it can take any 9x19 ammunition such as, you know, 9 Luger or 9 Parabellum, 9x19 NATO. There are a couple of things that make this different from the standard 45, you know, 1911, 1911A1. First off, like I was saying earlier, is the trigger. The trigger does not move straight back. It actually moves in like a curvy arc. Let me try to get that here. All right, focusing in. See, it's like a, mo it's like a little crescent moon, you know, arc movement. Second thing is the grip safety. It has no grip safety whatsoever in the back. Back onto the trigger. You can see that little pin right there. It actually rolls on that pin, the, tr the trigger. Another weird thing is the slide stop, like, I guess you would call it a detent ball. I guess it keeps it from uh, huh, locking back without so much, you know, pressure or whatnot. The bluing on this extractor indicates that it's been actually captured by a Russian armory after the ruins of World War II. You see the bluing is actually a different color. It's like that purplish, you know, I guess purplish bluish bluing. It's not, you know, the black as the whole pistol was. And this denotes that it was changed out in the past. Um, Russia had a funny way of doing things. They'd capture weapons and replace out the parts that were really prone to breaking before they would break. So that's why this pistol actually has a different extractor on it. You know, of course made of Russian standards. Now, there's a little N with a tilde on the left-hand side in the center of the picture, and that denotes it was made in 1943, so this was definitely sent, over, sent overseas from the Star Factory in Spain over to the Germans because Star, um, the Star Factory was helping out the Axis powers. It's kind of strange, but, you know, they actually chambered this gun in 9x19 to meet the demand of, you know, 9x19 Luger and the, P, you know, the P1, P38 pistols. Well, P1 was after the war, so P38. <laughs> uh, the X in the box is just a proof stamp from the factory. Also, same thing with the P and the flaming bomb or flaming grenadier symbol. This was imported by I think RW Arms in Redmond, and it was um, you know it was brought back from you know World War II, and I'm pretty sure it's been in a Russian storehouse for a long time because it had a lot of cosmoline on it when I had to clean it out. All right, one major problem, and it's kind of like a defect slash, you know, error on STARS manufacturing part. This is common with 90% of the STAR pistols that are, you know, that were produced. The safety works on, you know, no cock, and the safety works even on half cock. But when you cock it all the way, it does not want to go into safe position. You have to actually pull this hammer back a slight tad, and then it will go into, you know, full position. When you drop the safety... Check this out. It moves just a slight tad. I'll do that once more again for you. When you drop the safety, it moves a slight tad forward, and it's ready for firing. The magazine is stamped into place, you know, so I'm pretty sure you can't even take this apart on the user level, really, to tell you the truth. I mean, it's just stamped completely into place. 
and that will not fit a 45 round. I'll go ahead and pick it up. Where is it? There it is. See, if you go into here, and press down, there's no way that a 45 is going to fit into that little hole right there. I mean, it's just way too big. The feed lips don't even clear. Another weird and cool thing about the Star Model B is that it was actually used in a lot of movies. Um, according to Guns.com, it's been used in Pulp Fiction, um, I think by, by the Samuel Jackson character when he says, Say what again? You know, when um, Jules shoots a guy with his 1911. Um, and also another nickel plate in 1911 was, I think, uh, used in the District 9 movie. And there's all sorts of other movies that the, that the uh, Star Model, Model B has been used in, mainly because of its uh, cheap cost at the time and the availability to fire blanks. You know, you can supposedly you can transfer these over to 9mm blanks very, very easily. Um, some movies that it's been used in, Halls of Montezuma, uh, you know, they, um, they put the Star Model B instead of a 45. You know, you think that Lieutenant Anderson has a 45, but he doesn't. He has a, you know, a Star Model B. It shoots 9. Um, the Untouchables, let me see here, uh, The Killer Elite, Silver Street, Coma, you know, many movies, even television in MASH. Um, like Hawkeye and Frank, they all have, you know, star model Bs, which is pretty funny. You know, you'd think that, you know, a movie or a show like MASH would have, you know, the, uh, the actual 45, you know, cause it's supposed to be American, but, um, it's, I mean, it's actually a pretty interesting firearm in terms of, you know, the film history that's been through. Another hard thing to do is to get that mainspring out. As you can see, it's just, you know, stuck on there. There's no pins or whatnot. So it's extremely hard to get out. Alrighty, to tear this pistol down, it's just about exactly like a 45. You know, I wouldn't say it's any type of different. You know, first you start with the uh, with the bushing. Well, that's what I start with, anyways. It's kind of difficult, but you know, you can do it without a wrench if you have to. There it goes. It flew across the room somewhere. Hope I can go find it, right? <laughs> All right. Well, that came out. Here you go. You line up this, and you get your your little witness mark to here, I believe. Let me see here, yeah, I'm having a little bit, a little bit of trouble. There we go, and it comes straight out. Alrighty, flip the pistol over. I'm trying to get back into focus there. Slide it out off of the rails, and here you go. You got your barrel with the link, and you've got your uh, your other half of the guide rod spring on the barrel. You know, typical lugs on the uh, barrel, kind of like a 1911. Rifling is actually pretty good for a uh, <laughs> very old firearm like this. So, um, you know, it's it's basically the same thing as a 1911 teardown. I can go in, you know, to the analytics and everything about it, but it's your typical 1911. Frame you know, just about the same as a 1911, but it's less complicated, and the mainspring is shoved way in there. You know, also same thing with the trigger. It's not a uh, it's not a 1911 trigger mechanism, and the uh, trigger action bar is down here, like through this part of the grip frame. All right, guys. Well, um, to put it back all together, you can go ahead and look it up on um, you know on a 1911 forum. They have all different types of uh, diagrams and pictures. I don't want to waste any more of y'all guys' time. You know, it's the same as a 45 to put it back together. So, you know, just go ahead and um, research it up. All right, guys. Well, that's the mayor. Thanks for watching.